And our top focus we're on right now is race to power in France. Voting is underway in the first round of the snap elections in France in what is seen as the country's most consequential polls in decades. The legislative snap polls will take place in two rounds, the first round today and the second on the 7th of July. Well, voting opened at 6 a.m. GMT and is expected to end at 1600 GMT in most of the country. But polling stations in Paris and other major cities will stay open until 1800 GMT. In France's overseas territories, however, the voting procedure started on Saturday. Residents of the tiny French archipelago of Saint-Pierre and Micolin off the coast of Canada were the first to cast their ballots in the first round of the election. C'est important parce que quand bien même on habite à l'étranger, on reste citoyenne française, ça ne nous détache pas de là où on vient. On dit j'ai de la famille là-bas, euh, j'ai encore, je veux dire, j'ai encore ma vie en France d'une part. Donc pour moi, oui, c'est important de voter étant à l'étranger parce que on peut tôt ou tard, on ne connaît pas l'avenir, je pourrais effectivement rentrer dans le, au pays. Et, euh France's islands in the Caribbean and the South American territory of French Guyana also voted on Saturday. Voters hit polling stations in the Pacific of New Caledonia as well. French expatriates in New York said that they follow politics in France very closely and are all very concerned. Je pense que c'est important de voter, oui, où qu'on soit. La France nous propose de voter, y compris quand on n'y réside pas. Je pense que c'est important. Et de, à nouveau, resserrer le lien et, et euh, montrer qu'on appartient toujours à la communauté. The second round is due on the 7th of July, at the end of which France will have elected the 577 members of its National Assembly. Two young leaders are gunning for the Prime Minister's post. 28-year-old frontman of far-right Jordan Bardella is squaring off against Prime Minister Gabriel Attal. The elections come after French President Emmanuel Macron called for a snap poll after suffering a crushing defeat to Marine Le Pen's far-right National Rally Party in European Parliament polls on June 9th. Well, polls suggest that the upcoming elections will confirm the trend. Well, according to polls, the National Rally Party leads through with around, strongly rather, with 34% of the vote followed by left-wing bloc that is the Nouveau Front at 29% and uh, both these parties are trailed by Macron's centrist alliance ensemble with 21%. The French system is complex and not proportionate to nationwide support for a party. Let's now take a look at how does it work. Now legislators are elected by district. A parliamentary contestant requires over 50% of the day's vote to be elected outright. If there's no clear winner, the top two contenders alongside anyone who secures above 12.5% of votes will head to a second round. In some cases, three or four people make it to the second round, though some may step aside to improve the chances of another contestant. A tactic used in the past to block far-right contestants. Key party leaders are expected to unveil their strategy in between the two rounds and this makes the result of the second round highly uncertain and dependent on the political maneuvering and how voters react to it. If the results go by the polls, Macron might have to cohabitate with, with an antagonistic prime minister regardless of who is elected in such a situation the government might end up implementing policies that diverge from president's real plan and for more on this we're now being joined by correspondent himanshu dikshit he's joining us live from paris welcome to the show himanshu now joining us live from the voting booth there in paris polls have opened latest uh, trends show that macron's centrist party is facing a disastrous result with marine le pen's national rally party surging ahead what more can you tell us what are you picking up from paris uh, what I can tell you is that I've been living in France since 2014 and never have experienced such a big political turmoil here. We have to remember that Macron had called these elections because they, he suffered a, a huge blow in the European Union elections. We have to understand that Macron's position is not under any problem at all. He remains the president 
probably no matter what happens in these elections. However, why he called these elections is something that even the biggest political pundits are unable to understand. What most people are saying is that the reason why he called these elections was because he wanted the left wing of the party to probably join with him and give them less time frame to be uh, to prepare for the elections. However, but that has not happened. What we also have to remember that these elections could be in a, could could end up in a very unprecedented situation for the French politics. We have to remember that the 577 is the number of seats. However, you need around 288 mm. to have the clear majority. You do not get a clear majority, then the, the problem arises because both allies. You have to remember there are three three key uh, political parties who are involved here. There is a far right. Uh, coalition which is led by Marine Le Pen and Jordan Bardella. Then you have the extreme left, the center left, who have created their own uh, uh, alliance, which is called the Front Populaire. And then you have the Macron. Macron, as of now in the polls, is at the number three position. Both allies have said that they will not have any tie up with Macron in, in ter, if there is a hung assembly, which probably means we do not know what could, what could happen in the future. Because in that way, we will have probably no government in France. And what will happen after that is something that we will all have to see. But absolutely, absolutely, you spoke about a situation of cohabitation which will, um, which will emerge if Macron's centrist party does not win the polls. Um, also talk to us about how the snap polls can perhaps alter the trajectory or the path of EU's largest country with the rise of far-right parties and how will it impact France's domestic and foreign policy? Uh, that's a very good question. Also, just to let you know that cohabitation, that cohabitation will exist in France only if the allies also tie up uh, uh, that also he, there could be a situation where that not also may arise that there's a big chance that none of the parties actually end up getting a majority so that we have to remember that yeah apart from that most likely if there is a majority it will be the far right which will be led by Jordan Bardella of course Marine Le Pen still remains the leader of the party however remember if if the if uh, if far right become comes into power Macron remains the president, he has to nominate a prime minister and all the policies will be made by the far right. Macron remains the president and you can imagine then how big the problem is. Uh, just to give you an example of the foreign policy, the far right does not want a separate Palestine state. They do, they, for them, they are completely pro-Israel, while Macron, there's a larger picture in the French politics where they do want eventually to have a free Palestine. In terms of the internal politics, everything will be handled by the far right. In terms of the external, the, the foreign policies, in terms of signing bills, everything Macron still will have the position over there. Right, Himanshu, you did speak of why and how Macron called for snap elections and this move has shocked the country because uh, France has never seen the rise of, uh, rather it, it has never been ruled by a far-right party. What are some concerns amongst the French voters there and why are they exactly frustrated with Macron's leadership? Macron, it's, he's a centrist, like that's what he, and for, for, the, for the far left, he, he is right for the far right, he is left. So that's the problem that he suffers from. He, the, most of the middle class in France think that he is not really for them, that he is a very elitist uh, leader. What you also have to understand that France is, a, is of course, is one of the biggest European countries. If you go to the bigger cities like Paris, most people here tend to lean towards the left. But if you go to the countryside, if you go to the other parts of France, is that's where Marine Le Pen is actually gaining a lot of interest. You have to remember, 2017 was the first time that Macron ran for elections. At, at, during that time, in the final round, he was set up against Marine Le Pen. At that time, Le Pen, he had a thumping victory against Le Pen. The last time when Macron got re-elected, Marine Le Pen again was against him. However, at that time, the battle was extremely close. And that can actually give us a great idea of how the far right has actually been rising in France again, which is a big scare for the far left. And it will not just be a political turmoil. We have to remember that France is a country where people protest. If far right comes into power, which seems likely, then we can just not see a political turmoil. We can also see a big social unrest. A lot of protests could turn into violence as well. You're joining us from the voting booth there in Paris. What is the excitement level amongst the voters given that these are the snap elections taking place? See, currently the time is around 8.30 a.m. So it's still quite early in the morning. You can see that's one of the voting booths that I'm standing in front of him. People are basically just coming in. But of course, it's very, very early in the morning. As the day progresses, I think more and more people will come in because people do understand the significance of this election. It is, as we said before, it's one of the most significant elections in the Fifth Republic of France since we had it in 1957. 
Right. Thank you, Imanshu, for joining us on the show with your insights from Paris.